Year number two under Neil Brown about to get underway at spring practice in Morgantown. We got uh, Skylar Callahan on the line from Mountaineer Maven to talk some West Virginia football. You can catch his site right on SI.com. Again, it's Mountaineer Maven. Skylar, it's been a while. How you doing? Doing great, man. How are you doing? Doing just fine. It's good to talk some spring football. Try to erase five and seven. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a tough task, but um, we're, we're going to dive into it. And I think that there's a lot of a lot of hope for Mountaineer fans to get this thing turned around quick. Neil Brown's got a really good plan laid out, and uh, I don't think it's going to be a necessarily as long as a rebuild as many people probably across the Big Twelve think it'll be. Well, the uh, the wide receiver position at West Virginia over the last uh, several years has been a very very deep and strong, talented position. You only lose George Campbell, the Florida State transfer, who caught seven touchdowns and 19 receptions last year. Uh, set us up at wideout for 2020. Yes, yeah, so you're getting a guy back, Sean Ryan, who transferred from Temple and was probably the best receiver on the team, but he dealt with some injuries last year and really wasn't able to be on the field a whole lot. So getting him back to full health is going to be key. And uh, you also got Sam James, who was a breakout redshirt freshman this past season really caught uh, the attention of Big 12 defensive coordinators. He went for over 223 yards against Texas Tech in, I think, 14 receptions, which was uh, both were uh, second in school history So for a single game. So Sam James, Bryce Wheaton, uh, Sean Ryan, uh, Ollie Jennings, Winston Wright, the list goes on and on for those guys that are returning. That's the biggest key is which guy is going to step up and be that go-to guy in their second year in the offense because they're all still relatively young. And if you look at this receiving core, they're also going to be here, not even just this year and next year, but probably three years from now. They're also really young. And uh, also a couple of receivers to look out for are incoming freshman Reese Smith out of Danville, Kentucky, and Devell Washington out of basically Michigan. Both guys probably uh, could, could see the field this year. Uh, Devell Washington, the bigger body guy, is about six foot four is kind of the, the home run threat that can go get you the 50-50 balls in the red zone where your physical possession type receiver. Reese Smith is a fast, twitchy guy that I think they're going to put in the slot here and there and try to get him the ball in space. Talking to a scalar, Kyle Han, you can join him on Mountaineer Maven. It's on uh, SI.com covering West Virginia athletics. Talking uh, Mountaineer football with spring practice just a couple weeks away. So, because the standard is pretty high at that position. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, James caught 69 passes last year at about 10 yards per clip. Uh, the other guys got some targets, so it's not like they're new to the field, uh, but a lot less targets, uh, not a lot of productivity there. Uh, how would you compare uh, this unit potentially to some of the better units we've seen in the last 10 years? Uh, it's It's got the potential. Um, I, I don't really know if they'll ever reach that Tavon, Austin, Stedman, Bailey level or the Kevin White, Mario Alford uh, level, or even the recently the Gary Jennings and David Sills level. So we'll see. Um, I think they're, they're, they have the potential to be a deeper unit, but maybe not as top or as talented near the top. And you got, like I said, five or six guys that are either a freshman, retro freshman or sophomore. They're going to see a significant amount of playing time in 2020. So I think depending on how they, they transition to this new receivers coach, which is Jared Parker comes over from Penn State, he's also going to be the offensive coordinator. That'll be an adjustment for them too because they learned from Xavier Dye a year ago. Now he's off with South Florida um, with Jeff Scott. So seeing how fast they transition uh, to how Jared Parker wants to go about this offense is going to be interesting to see. And again, I really want to see which guy takes that next leap. Sam James was the the, the foregone conclusion guy last year. He was the guy that was going to go get you plays. I think everyone's kind of thinking it's going to be Sean Ryan or Bryce Wheaton, but I would not be surprised to see a guy like Ollie Jennings who showed flashes a little bit last year as some, as sometimes one of the best res blocking receivers that the Mountaineers had. So if he can get it going in the, in the passing game too, he's going to be a guy to watch out for. As you see on the banner there, like, comment, share the videos out there on social media, and subscribe to the Voice of College Football, best discussion, debate, and analysis on the game we all love. Let's talk West Virginia with uh, Skylar Callahan. Join him on Mountaineer Maven. It's on SI.com. We're breaking down uh, the defensive line, of course, key in the Big 12. Got to put heat on the quarterback. Uh, your thoughts about what's coming back and um, your prospects at uh, D-line. Yeah, well, they're certainly getting much bigger and deeper, and that's kind of the emphasis 
uh, since Neil Brown took over. It's, you know, Dana Holgerson and, and Tony Gibson, when they were here, you know, that old regime ran the 3-3-5 defense. It didn't rely on having, you know, seven, eight guys that you could rotate in there. Um, where this defense, you, you more than likely will have four guys down. It's, it's a multiple defense. They're going to switch schemes and alignments, you know, constantly. They're never going to throw out the same thing. They're going to have a bunch of different wrinkles. But they rely on having a deep set of guys that they can rotate in there and keep bodies fresh. They want to keep their snap counts down. Last year, they weren't able to do that. They didn't have the depth. And I think that's why when you look at this recruiting class that they brought in, they brought in Akeem Mesador, um, Linnell Carr, who could potentially be an edge rusher. Uh, Tara Simmons, kind of the same thing. They've got a, a couple of other guys um, that they really focused on building that defensive lineman. Quay Mays uh, is another newcomer, a junior college kid. He's going to come right in and step in and, and be an impact guy. He's actually um, – Related to Alvoid Bay, a former Mountaineer, I think that's his actually his uncle. So, a um, little Mountaineer connection there. But I think that it's uh, the Stills brothers, Darius and Dante Stills, they are going to be the the energizer bunny to this defense. It's going to go through them, and if those two guys can create pressure like they did a year ago, this defense may go up to the next level. And if you look at back in a lot of Buster Virginia's game last year, they were in a lot of games heading into the fourth quarter. They got gassed out in the fourth quarter, and I think that's a biggest. That was the biggest reason why they went five and seven, is because they got fatigued and they didn't have enough guys to rotate in at the defensive line. Now they've got some other guys in there, even though they're young. They do have more bodies, and they can take some of that pressure off of the Stills brothers. Of course, they took uh, Baylor most notably down the stretch, and I got to admit, Skyler, I'm watching West Virginia play right. six, seven, eight times a year, usually. But a five-win West Virginia team, I only caught you a few times last year. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned, man, Darius Stills and Dante, the two brothers, jump off the stat page. 12 tackles for loss, six sacks from Darius. Dante chipping in with 14 tackles for loss and eight sacks. So that's a ton of productivity uh, coming up uh, on those DN positions. Got Skylar Callahan on the line. Please join him, the rest of the crew there at Mountaineer Maven on SI.com covering West Virginia athletics as we get you set for Mountaineer spring practice in a few weeks. Skyler, we appreciate you stopping by as always, man. Uh, don't be a stranger, and we'll have you back to talk some more uh, positional units. Absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me on, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to it.